it's time to work on the boat again. Um, it's late week around that area, and uh, we finally have some good weather in Texas. Uh, we've had some really, really, uh, last weekend was just brutally humid because it seemed like it was building up to this huge event, and it turned out to be a pretty big. Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, and Tuesday, we had nothing but severe storms. I mean big ones, tornadoes, giant hail. Uh, I was really scared about the boat for a while, but it seemed like every time that something was coming towards Frisco, it just kind of split and ran around us. So this is the first day. It's mid-80s. The humidity is probably 30%. Uh, the wind's not blowing. Uh, it's gorgeous. I mean, this would be a day to be on the lake, to be honest with you, but I don't have a boat. So, um, anyway, we're going to see if we can get some work done. It's uh, mid afternoon on Thursday. I got done early, came home. I'm going to see if we can get the pink stuff cut in the shape of the deck because that's where we are right now. Everything else is done. The ski locker's in. I'll show you also what I figured out on the ski locker as far as the drain is concerned. Um, also, the foam update. I'll tell you what we're officially going to do. Um, we'll get the pink stuff cut. Um, I've got some products here I'm going to show you and tell you about some new stuff that I'm going to do. So uh, uh, let's go look and see what came in and I'll tell you what's coming. Um, you see two new five gallon buckets here. Um, that's my foam. Uh, it came in uh, yesterday. Um, I ordered it from my favorite place which is uh, Aero Marine. Um, if you Google search it, don't go to the first one. It actually takes you to some air, uh, aviation website. I think that's aeromarineproducts.com. But uh, this stuff is the easiest to work with, and it's also the least expensive. When I was shopped around, uh, it is the, the, it's probably with shipping and everything, probably at 20 or $30 less than the, the nearest competitor. Uh, and it's a small company, and I like dealing with small companies. They, I mean, one place I talked to said uh, it was about five days from order processing and about uh, 10 days for shipping. I ordered this last Thursday, and it got here yesterday. So that was uh, three business days, four business days. Um, to get here, so they are Johnny on the spot with shipping, no you know, BS about it. So our foam is here, I just hope that's enough. <laughs> that's, um, what is that, 40 cubic feet, I think is what it is. I have to go back and look. Um, and we did go with two pound this time. I talked to a lot of people, and I talked to a builder here, and uh, the, it would have taken me three times as much to do, or twice as much to do eight, uh, four pound because it doesn't get as, um, as, as expand as much, and it's not as floaty. So I went ahead, because this thing's built like a Sherman tank, so I'm not really worried about stiffness. All this is is to kind of provide some sound deadening and to stiffen up the floor. Okay, what next? Um, oh, got me a little toy. This is a air-operated stapler. My hand cramps up like crazy when I'm using a regular staple. Now this thing uses T50 staples. Okay, this is what you can buy at Home Depot. Now, what you want to get for Marine is, I don't know how you pronounce that, Monel or Monel. These are rust proof and it says good for Marine applications. They have stainless steel, but it says not good for Marine applications. Apparently it's not um, uh, coated properly or treated, I don't know. But this one packet right here for how many staples? A thousand staples is 16 bucks versus like three bucks for everything else. So you gotta use them. But this is what you'd use for upholstery and everything else that keeps the rust from happening. So uh, I got me, this I got at Northern Tool. Um, I think it was uh, 25 or 26 bucks. It's got a little staple place. Uh, as you can see how many staples you got left. Um, and what we're gonna use this for is for when we wrap the, uh, the stringers, uh, I'm actually gonna staple it on there and then, uh, and then uh, over it to hold it down so that way we don't have any air pockets. Uh, and, I, and I tested it. You can't go through two layers of 1708 with this. It just bends the staple. But one layer in standard wood, it goes into pretty fine. Um, also, when I redo the, the front cushions, because the wood up there is kind of, it's, it's nasty. Um, the, the vinyl's fine, but the wood's bad, and I'll do that during next winter. We're going to not fart with that right now. Um, let me see, anything else as far as new stuff? Oh, and of course, I got another run to Home Depot. My roller finally crapped out. I had to get another four inch roller. It just got to the point where I couldn't recycle it anymore, and uh, so it, it's been retired. Got more of my little rolly thingies and more of my stir sticks, which Lowe's and Home Depot are getting real stingy with them around here. They don't even keep them out anymore. So we're going to move this over here to our little stash and um, get ready to clean up here. And then I'm going to get my this right here, which is my copper rod. We're going to straighten that all out and then go up there and measure the, the front. Um, all right. So... I did something kind of crazy as far as ordering something for the boat, and uh, it's more of a, 
it's a vanity thing versus a need to replace or whatever. But a um, buddy of mine's got a C Ray like this, and he's got a captain's call exhaust on it, which it comes out the side with a 454 big block, and it sounds freaking awesome. So, uh, guess what? I just dropped some big dough on it. Uh, I think it was $1,800 for the polished um, turndowns that actually go on your um, exhaust right here. And then they have an elbow that comes out and then it goes out to side and has this real pretty polished stainless edge. And then so that way you can send it through the, the prop whenever you're in a marina and you want to be quiet when my wife's on board and all that kind of good stuff. But when you have one of fun and you want to just fire it up and, and have a good old time, they can come out the side. And in our, our lake, those, those captain call exhausts are pretty cool. And they sound, the side exhaust to me sound a lot different than the, than the, uh, the rear transom exhaust. It sounds more tuned. Uh, it sounds more like a race car instead of just a wide open straight out the back. So, yes, I ordered it. It's on the way. The bad thing is it takes about three weeks to get here, uh, but they make them custom. When I called, um, I talked to, I want to say his name is Jim Browning at Corsa. I ordered straight from them. Uh, they actually have you take measurements and all that kind of stuff before they, uh, before they cut it. And it takes about three weeks. That's of their back order, especially this time of year. Um, so that's on its way. Um, oh, and I had a little uh, panic moment. You notice I got a little bit of oil right there. Um, somebody posted on one of my YouTube um, things or somewhere, I forgot, it says, you cannot trust the diff stick for telling if there is water in there. Which, yeah, yes you can. If you've been running it, it turns into a froth. But it doesn't tell you if you have small amounts in there. So because water, when it, or oil and water, when it separates, oil goes to the top, water goes to the bottom. So I came out here one night and drained the oil just to double check and it is just as black as midnight, no streaks of white in it whatsoever, no water, so we're all good. Engine is good, I'm not gonna worry about it anymore. We do need to do some, the transom needs some, uh, transom assembly needs some help, we need some bolts on it, I need a new uh, trim cylinder. So, all right, uh, that's enough of me rambling. That's the updates for the week and the decisions. Um, let me go take the cover off of this and I'll go over what we're gonna do for foam. God, is it not a gorgeous day or what, man? I tell you, there is not a cloud in sight. There's no humidity. Probably, I don't know, mid to upper 80s. So it feels good. Got the boat almost completely uncovered. Too lazy to take the whole thing off. Okay, let me get in here. Here is what is going to happen with the ski locker. Noticed. I completely glassed it all the way in. Um, yeah, the peanut butter looks like a different color because I used the wheat flour. Big mistake. Um, it makes a different color and it doesn't sit just right. So um, anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a small hole back here and I'm actually gonna put a transom um, t drain tube in it, which is that little brass thing. And we'll just put it dead in the center so water can drain down to the center part of the bilge or you know the, the runway down here. Um, and then we can, when we don't want water to go in there or backfill, we can just use a little plug. Okay, foam thing. I'm not going to do limber holes. I'd have to drill too many holes, do too much stuff as far as pool noodles or balloons or all that kind of crap. So we're not going to mess with that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to seal it up with the Red Guard, which is a um, very, very good waterproofing stuff on all these decks. Now, by some weird chance, we get water down underneath here down the road. What I'll do is I'll cut access holes, which are the, you know, like what you put for a gas tank so you can get to the little spot and then you put those little plastic screw off deals onto them, onto them. That way you can let water into that area and I'm having snap in carpet so it really doesn't matter. So if we have, you know, three or four or four or five of those little access holes, that's great down the road. But right now we are sealing it up. And if I notice the boat's sitting funny, I'm also gonna have it weighed too so we can kind of keep an eye on it through the years. But I think, God, I mean, we're gonna have this thing sealed up so much what am I worried about? I mean, my dad had a great point. He said that the other day. He said, Jay, what the hell are you worried about? It ain't going to do anything. So, needless to say, uh, we're going to seal it up, be done with it, get this deck done once and for all. Man, I'm so tired of sitting here looking at stringers. But uh, first things first is uh, we're going to get this deck measured, get the stuff ready to go. And I'm going to take my DA sander, come in here and buzz everything down really good, figure out you know, because when we cap the stringers, I need to buzz this down so it has some good adhesion and then wipe it and we need to clean all this dust out of here. And this, like I told you last week, I'm not real impressed with how the, the center portion came out in the gas tank area. Uh, so I'll sand that down really good, 
make sure I don't have any uh, air bubbles. It looks like it actually dried pretty good. A couple little dings and stuff, but that's that's my worst one. That's where all that wheat flour was. So uh, don't use wheat flour, guys. So anyway, I'm gonna go get my copper wire and set it up over there and see how it goes. Oh, um, I'm having the tank tested. It's dropped off at a, a prop shop here in town. He builds gas tanks. He's running a pressure test on it, make sure it's okay. He's also redoing our stainless prop. So, all right, guys, we're gonna get this uh, copper wire and see if we can get this front section cut. Actually get somewhat of a, a deck looking in here. All right, I know you probably can't see me, but too bad. I'm doing is I'm attempting to get this measured. I'm going to use duct tape to attempt to hold it into place. Kind of easy. Kind of just laid right where it needed to be. Kind of, sort of. Okay. That gets me a general, general setup there. And what we'll do is we'll cut our. Uh, our pink stuff a little on the fat side. So when we put it in here, um, we know it's gonna work properly and not, uh, we don't have to fiddle with it too much. Um, or actually I should say, no, we're gonna, my brain's going too fast. Um, we're gonna cut it a little fat so when we put it in here, we can trim it down to match. So I'm gonna go take this over to pink stuff and see what we can find out. Well, I kinda got ahead of myself here and didn't turn on the camera, but Kind of get the idea what I did. Got the uh, entire deck cut out of pink stuff. I'll tell you how I did it. I uh, had a lot of trial and error here. Uh, a little frustration, a little cussing, um, and a lot of deciphering. Okay, so the front part with my um, ground rod worked pretty good. Um, what I've learned with the pink stuff is don't try to be absolutely precise. I mean, this stuff is 10 bucks a sheet, so you want to get it fairly good to where you need it to be, and then what you do is you make notations like um you see like right there i said you know i need that to be fat a half inch along that area right there um what i did is i went every after i made the nose piece which came out pretty good i got a little spot that i need to come fat on on this side you can see the duct tape I had to add to it i think when i got out I, I bent the rod a little too much um so the second sheet what i did you can see the the black hash marks because this has such a, a fall from the bow to about right here is I went every six inches and I took measurements I, when I did originally and it's gone now is I put see that pink string right there I strung a pink string from the very center line all the way down all the way back and I took measurements all the way out and I just doubled it on the other side or did the same thing and I laid it down on the ground measured put a dot measured put a dot measured put a dot I connected the dots cut it now it's not perfect I had to do some adjustments when I got it in here this is why you use this pink stuff to make patterns because it's never going to be perfect so what I've done is I've got it you know where I want it now um, and so now we can cut the, the real pieces of wood which of course I don't have so go to run up to uh, Home Depot or Lowe's and get some more but um, the, the next sheet was actually fairly easy because it's almost straight so I just basically made a straight cut I'm, I'm on the width and then back here we made a couple of, uh, we made a smaller piece and then two side pieces here. So we have one piece of plywood, two pieces of plywood, three, and then this makes four. So I can get away with four, so I need to go buy three more because I've got one here. Um, and then we'll just cut the ski locker whenever we get this all uh, laid in there and figured out where it's gonna go. But uh, it wasn't that bad. It took me about an hour and a half of just sitting here thinking, and of course, you know, phone calls and so on and so forth. This looks kind of crappy. But basically what it is, is this is gonna go out and over to, uh, to accommodate the uh, fill for the, uh, and the gas tank and, and all that kind of good stuff. And uh, I gotta notate right here that I want to square this off. So that means that I'm gonna square from here to here. So that way I don't forget because I want this to come all the way across. 
so that's kind of where I am right now. Um, it's almost dinner time. Uh, probably need to go inside and clean up. But you can see that I've got it, you know, where it needs to be. And then any of this this gap, we're going to fill in with peanut butter. Um, get it nice and in and, um, and, and pookied up. Now the only thing is, is I'm kind of thinking about is do I want to put cleats along the the base here to allow the 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 plywood to sit on or do we even bother with that so I mean there wasn't any there from the originally from the factory I don't see a lot of people doing it so I'll give it some thought I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do yet but uh, anyway that's where I am right now uh, not sure I'm gonna do any more today um, so if not I will see you on Saturday I'm gonna work Saturday through Monday we're not going to the lake even with the jet ski because this thing needs to get done I am really kinda of feeling overwhelmed right now um, this needs to get finished we need to get it on the lake and uh, time frame right here is just is looking awful I mean we're uh, I'm scared I'm not gonna make July 4th so uh, anyway that's it for now I'll talk to you again soon and before I forget this is also what I did uh, I took a template of paper and I kind of drew out a rough estimate or a rough drawing here with the center line and then I have here's my individual six foot hash marks they go all the way back so therefore we get our, our good measurements um, from front to back so that way I've got it and I just checked them off as I marked them on my pink stuff and uh, it worked out pretty nice wasn't perfect but you know I don't know of anything that is when you're building a boat because nothing's square it's like a really crappy built house nothing is exact you got to trim and decipher and I call it ciphering but anyway so uh, that's how I did it